Welcome to Watercolor and Wonder. Today we're going to make some mini landscape paintings. These are super fun and very easy to do. If you've not made an actual watercolor picture before, this is a great place to start. When I did these for the first time, it's when I really felt like a watercolor artist because I wasn't just doing an exercise or playing with my materials. I was making actual pictures and they were actually beautiful. So you will need a palette and some watercolor paper um, along with a brush of your choosing. I'm going to be using a water brush, but you can use any watercolor brush for today's exercises. At the end of today's video, I'll show you how to turn these mini paintings into a work of art worth displaying. So grab your gear and let's get started. Okay, so to get started with our mini landscapes, I have just a blank sheet of paper and a pencil, and I do this just to keep myself in bounds, especially when you're starting. I'm gonna draw just eight freehand rectangles, because I'm gonna make eight different landscapes today. These do not need to be precise, as you can see. We are just being creative, learning, and enjoying our paint. Okay. So I've got eight rectangles. And the re one of the reasons I like this is that you get to do, because you have to wait on watercolor to dry, you can continually work while something else is drying by moving on to another scene. To begin with, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a few colors just to have started. I know I'm gonna do, because it's landscapes, I know I'm gonna have some skies today. So I'm gonna make a couple of blues. I'm using a medium sized water brush. So I got a nice deep blue there. I'm gonna try to leave it all, all my paint as much as I can on the palette and wipe just a little bit off. And I'm gonna have a lighter blue for some lighter skies. If you don't have the same colors I have, that's fine because you're gonna be able to be completely um, creative with what you're doing today and just use what you have. You'll see as we get going that there's a lot of freedom in what we're doing today. I also know because it's landscapes, I'm gonna need some greens. I have this nice olive green, olive toned I'm gonna mix up here. And then just a traditional, this is hooker's green. And get that one going. If you have this bright green and you want a more olive tone, you can, well, we're gonna do this a lot today, but anytime I want to dull a color down, I'm gonna use the opposite color from it on the color wheel. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna get my magenta going. So I use that instead of red for mixing colors. If I have a little bit of magenta, and I take some of my bright green, 
you can, I don't know if you can see on the palette, but it does dull it down. I'll do it a little bit more even. You can see it will, it will get closer and closer to brown the more magenta I add to my bright green. So if you don't want it that far, just add a little bit more green back to it. You'll still have a nice, um, all more olive toned green with a little bit of magenta. So we can do that for all our colors today and I will probably end up doing that, but I'm just gonna get essentially the color wheel going here. Get a violet. And an orange. This one's a little bit light, so I'm gonna add a little bit. I have a few oranges on my palette. Good deep orange. And then finally, and I'm cleaning off in between a yellow. That's a lot happening in one little pan here. I might all spread out as we go. I'm, I've got a lot of mixing areas, but I find as I go, I tend to fill them up. So I'm gonna try to keep things here. All right, so for my first scene, I'm gonna start with that. I'm, and one of the things I like to do also is if I have a green, like a green, and I wanna make it even more neutral shade, I will add a little black to it. And we get this nice gray. I'm gonna give you a variety of tones today that you can practice with. Some are gonna be really bold and vivid. Some are gonna be really um, soft and neutral like this one. And so I'm gonna lighten that even more because we know with watercolor to get a lighter color, we just add water, we don't need white. And I'm gonna add a wash to this first. And we did that in a previous video. If you'd like to go back and review that, or if you haven't watched it yet, a wash is just making a smooth background. And because these areas are small, we can work pretty quickly without having to worry about lines and streaks. And so I'm, I'm being pretty loose with this. You can see that I've concentrated my paint in a few places. I, I want that effect for this to kind of give it a, a more varied tone over the thing. And that's all I'm doing for the first round. For this next one, let's have some fun. And I'm gonna get some really bold, bright colors. And I'm gonna keep them bright by not adding too much water. I'm just gonna go across here and I'm almost immediately gonna add in some magenta and you can see they start to mix right away. See how pretty that is? We'll add in some blue. And this is just a time, I'm just experimenting to see what colors do when they meet, when you put them together in a space. And I'm not gonna, and then on your edges, you can go back as long as you're okay with the colors blending and drag down to make a nice sharp edge. And then I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna keep it, bring a line across here, about there. Like I said, and you can follow me exactly in these or you can make up your own, especially after we've done a few and you get the hang of it. All right, let's keep with our bold theme I'm gonna do another bold one here. Just adding that nice wash, nice bright yellow. I'm gonna to start to mix in a little bit of orange. And you see as I change colors, they'll start to blend nicely and I'm gonna add paint to deepen the color. Now, if I just want this color then to get lighter, I'm not gonna get any more paint. I'm just gonna keep squeezing my brush and you'll see that the color lightens as I go down because I'm not putting more paint in, I'm only adding water. And I'm gonna go ahead and, I like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I know I'm adding things at the bottom of a lot of these because they're landscapes, so we're gonna need to add in land so it's okay to lighten it. Actually, that's what we prefer, or I prefer. I'm gonna add a little orange, something, a little drop of water must have got there. And... Okay, now this next one, I think I'm going to make as a night scene, which means I'm gonna need some darker colors. I'm gonna get a black mixed up. I'm gonna go back for some more of my deep blue, and I'm going to have some violet. Okay. Okay. 
And if you notice along the way, I'm going to go back and point out where I've done this already in today's painting, that your color um, creates like a choppy edge somewhere. It's because when you've combined paints, one color had more water than the other. And so whichever color has more water, it's going to push into the color that had less, that has more paint concentrated, and push the paint aside. You can see it happening right here. It's pushing the paint. So if you don't want that to happen, try to make sure your colors have the same concentration of paint to water ratios. And again, I'm just going down the side. I don't mind these colors blending because that's what I'm doing. And I'm just kind of alternating between, between them as I pull them down. I am going to lighten this now, so I'm not going to add any more paint as I pull this down. And then you can see that will just come all the way to the end. Now we talked before about picking up beads. If I wanted to tilt this, there's not a ton of water here to pick up. And because I know I'm gonna layer over it, I'm not as concerned about um, the paint coming back up into my painting. So I'm gonna add things on top. Okay, let's do another, let's do a sky. I'm gonna show you a fun thing here with a sky on this one. I'm gonna do a pretty, nice, beautiful blue. While this is still wet, you're gonna to want to have a paper towel handy. I'm going to get this blue laid down for about half the painting. And then I'm going to use my paper towel to add clouds. So that's a good vivid blue. And I'm gonna again fade it out here. You don't always have to do that, but before what we're doing, fading it out makes us as easier to move between the layers. Sometimes you'll want your sky to come all the way down to the horizon. Okay, so clouds, while it's still wet, I'm gonna take a little bit of paper towel, wad it up, and I'm just going to press it on. There we go. Just however much clouds you want on your sky. I think that looks pretty nice. I'm gonna leave it just like that. Alright, moving on to another one. I'm gonna go, so now we've done some really bold colors. I'm gonna lighten and dull the next few. So I'm gonna take some pink for this. I really like mixing my magenta with a little bit of orange. It creates a coral. And then to dull this, I'm gonna think opposite the color wheel of magenta. And that would be green. So I'm gonna get a little bit of green. And that's going to dull my pink down and I'm going to add water as well. So water lightens, the green dulls, and when I put that together I get this lovely color. So I'm going to just put that on my sky. And you can see this will be a much lighter color than the last ones we've done. I'm going to do the same with my orange. I'm going to bring in a nice light orange with this, just keeping with that lighter tone. And I'm going to finish with a very light yellow. Again, lots of water added to bring that lightness. There we go. Lovely. Okay, and let's do couple more now. I'm going to do another sky. This one I'm going to create some even uh, division in the sky. So I'm just going to put blue across the top. If I want it to fade just from there, I'm going to wipe off my brush and just bring in wet. And do you see how that immediately blends down and softens the edge? And then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to leave a little space and I'm just going to add some yellow for a bright bright background sky and I'm just kind of going all over I'm not making a complete wash there's spots of white there's spots that are still dry and I'm even gonna dot back in and add a couple of darker spots of yellow 
not much still pretty light though okay and then for my final sky I'm gonna I have a little bit of a teal color here I'm going to mix that with my blue that lovely and again I'm lightening it by adding water I'm gonna do another sky and this one I'm gonna add clouds in also and so I'm gonna use our paper towel trick so maybe if that first time around it didn't go as you had hoped you can have another chance have another practice have another go at it here okay get another little piece of paper towel wad that up and just dab that on there super simple really pretty way to add some interest to your paintings now the wonderful thing is we've gone through all this all these down here are still wet but this first one is dry so I can go back to that now and for this one, I'm going to do a series of trees, building with lighter ones in the back to darker ones in the, and larger ones in the front. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of green with a little bit of black. It's still really light because it's got a lot of water and a little paint. To make a tree, like just a regular old evergreen looking tree, I'm going to make a line and then I'm going to leave a little space at the top before I start and kind of just dance my brush out here getting wider and leaving some space not being very regular about it I'm gonna do that a few times so I don't start right at the tip I leave a little bit and just kind of dance back and forth makes it look a little bit more interesting that way I'm gonna do a couple more generally my branches don't meet each other in the middle one starts a little bit lower again these are not like actual trees we're not trying to be botanists today so just making them interesting and pretty go now we'll let our first layer of trees dry while we go on to this one this one I'm just going one of my favorite things to do because sometimes black is too stark and I don't want to just add a, like a really black so I will um, soften it with some brown black and brown together I use for a lot of my darker shades it just creates that warmth to it not quite so stark and so however much you water that down I'm gonna add a little bit more and I'm just going to kind of follow the line that I left for a little ridge line and so we're doing a, a wash just like we did at the top which now we're just starting here in the middle pulling it down oh, which one did I paint with there we go I'm just gonna clean up my edges just like that and that's kind of a beautiful sky I'm gonna to touch along the edge with the a darker color just dot it along and let it fade down while it's still wet and I think that just looks lovely while that's drying I'm going to also go ahead and fit this one will be finished you can always add more but I'm just gonna add a few birds flying very simple but very pretty now we're gonna move on to this one which I'm going to make into a desert scene and again we're not being botanists this doesn't have to look like a real desert it can be very imaginative with our colors and our landscapes today and that's all I'm gonna do. Just a little orange, slightly watered down. I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna add more layers to this one. So this one, let's, I'm gonna make this one a cityscape. And I'm going to use my dulling down method of some violet. 
to dull violet, I add the opposite color on the wheel, which is yellow. So I'm gonna use that right there. I'm gonna pick up a little yellow. And that will make it just not quite so bright. And then I'm just going to paint in some rectangles, which you can totally do, which is a good practice also if you just need to practice making straight lines, right? So come around the edges, pull that through, make sure I use the correct purple. Again, these don't have to be complicated to be pretty, right? Smaller building here. And this one I'm gonna add another layer to also. So this one's not done yet. Add a nice tall building on this side. Just pull that over. There we go. Now we can just keep moving through. This is what's really fun about these. This one I'm going to make just a lovely outdoor scene, the grass. So I'm gonna just take a green and make a nice rolling slope. If you want a super bright green, you can do it. If you want something a little duller, you know how to do that now. And that's all for that right now. But you can see it starting to take shape. This one I'm gonna add a lot of layers to, so we're gonna come back to this one pretty frequently now. I'm going to, in my background, take my brown and black that's pretty watered down, and I'm gonna make a ridge line. Just kind of dancing that along. I'm not adding more paint to my brush, I'm just using what I've got, because I don't want this to be very dark. And I'm just going to pull that down and kind of let it fade out with the water in my brush. There we go. Same with this one. I'm going to add a few layers here. I'm going to make, um, let's do pink. And we're going to dull it down, which we know to do that. We add our green. Almost to a brown shade. I'm going to pull that. I'm going to do a ridge line here too, but this one... So we're going to practice the same thing a few times so you can have an opportunity if it didn't go as you had hoped. You can do it again. All right. Now over here, we're going to switch it up into a beach. For a beach, I just want a tan, which I have this color here. You can get that by your just your brown really light, right? And because we don't have our ocean in here yet, I'm doing the sand next and we'll add the ocean after the sand is dry. But just a pretty flat horizon there. And that's all we're doing here. I'm gonna switch back up to my trees up here. So I had, I was just doing green and black. So I'm gonna add a little more green and a little more black for the next layer. Because we want to, as, as things get closer to us, they get brighter and darker, usually. So I'm gonna add in my trunk, start a little bit ways down, start dancing that along for the branches. And as, add as many as you'd like for yours. There's not really a rhyme or reason, just kind of what what I think looks nice as I'm doing it. Okay. I think that's, I might add, no, I think that's good for that. All right.
right, we're gonna switch back down here because this one's gonna have a lot of layers. I'm gonna come back to my black and brown a little bit darker now, and I'm gonna make another ridge line. I'm gonna vary it however you'd like. And we're just adding that, oops. And here's a classic mistake, I did it. I've warned you about it before. My painting wasn't completely dry. I rushed it because I did one, two, three, four. I just didn't give it enough time. So you can see my edges are going to be blurry on that ridge because the layer before it wasn't dry. Live and learn, right? Apparently, I have to live and learn a few times. So now I'm gonna check this one. This one still feels a little damp, so I'm not gonna do that. We'll go back to, I'm gonna check them now. Little, I think our desert's ready for another coat. So I'm gonna add um, a little bit of magenta to my orange for the next layer, which is just gonna go the opposite way and create a cool like X effect. Nice and bright, I love it. And if that line's showing through a little, I can just add a little water or add another layer if I need to, if it's showing through too much, but I don't think it will once it dries. With this color, I'm also going to create my sun in this sky. Put that right on top, that nice dry sky. There we go. And I'm going to use this for a cactus way back here. I, you know, the size that you paint will create the scale of the painting. Could be real close up, could be really far away, and until you paint it, you don't know. I'm also going to paint, I'm gonna add a little bit more magenta to it just to vary the colors so not everything in here is the same. We're gonna paint one of those cool round cactuses here. have like those kind of look like floppy ears all over and to add the detail of this I'm gonna take the very very tip and I'm gonna sometimes these little details really make the painting work so I'm just gonna add a few very very tiny bricks. There we go. Our cityscape is nice and dry now. So in front of this, I'm gonna add a little bit of black to our violet because the layer's gonna get a little, ooh, that was a lot of black. Way more than I thought. We'll add some violet back in balance that out. I'm just going to add another layer of buildings. Create interest and create depth by doing that. If your previous layers show through, you can add, you can just go over this layer again to create it darker. here. Do I like my city like this? I think I do. I think I'm just gonna add another low building. And then I'm also going to um, mess with nature and I'm gonna add a dark moon in this one.
I just think that will look cool. There we go. All right, back down here to this guy. I'm gonna add in some shrubbery in the background. So I'm gonna make some like tall, just fluffy trees here. A few bushes. So those are far away from us, right? And then we'll add some stuff in the foreground as well. So, and then if you wanna create a little shade on them to add some depth, once you've painted them, I'm just going to, on all on one side, add, just touch my brush back down with a little bit of the same shade of paint. And that will create a shadow on that side and just make them look a little bit more real. All right, I don't trust this one yet. I'm still gonna wait. I'm gonna come to this one though, and I'm gonna add another ridge line layer. And this one I'm gonna add, a it's gonna be a green layer but it's gonna be a dulled down green. And we know that to get dull, we add the opposite color. So I'm gonna add some of that magenta. It's just gonna be a real little ridge line here. And I'm gonna fade it out by wiping my brush off and just bringing water to the bottom. And that will allow it to fade below. All right, let's go back to our beach. Now I'm going to get this nice deep blue for the water. And I'm just going to pull it across. Isn't that cool? If you have your brush leaves a few white marks, that's fine. It makes it look a little bit more like water. And I'm going to uh, take our paper towel and just dab it a little bit right along the sand line. Create the waves. And if you didn't like, like maybe that was too high, just add a little paint back. No big deal. There we go. There's our ocean. Okay, where can we go now? What's dry? Our trees are dry. I'm going to darken that, so I'm going to add some green and some black. That black's coming out strong. But that's okay because I think this will be my last layer on this. So darkest layer, closest layer, which means I'm going to have a really big tree right here. And make sure you go back and get plenty of paint as we're... So it's going to be darker, it's going to be bigger, and it almost completely, pretty much completely covered up that one tree. But you know, when you're doing that, sometimes you don't know what's gonna end up covered up and what's not. And I'm just gonna add one more. I'm gonna actually bring it way up. Keep that brush just dancing back and forth. My paint's getting a little light, so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add a little green, cautious of my black. It's a little bit risky to see I didn't get the exact shades. So if you mix in the middle of painting, likely it won't match. With this though, I don't think it will be seen. There we go. There is our beautiful tree scene. That one is now complete. And so the top, the top row is now done. I'm gonna come back to this one and I'm gonna add some grass in the foreground. So I'm gonna get a green, I want it a little bit darker. And this is a great job, you're, uh, a thing you can try to do when you're doing this is to try to get all your grass uniform in the brush strokes. So I'm just adding a few so we can see we're definitely down here in the front. And I'm gonna add some flowers to a few of those. So make believe, I'm gonna use a little magenta. And because my thing is dry, I'm just gonna, basically I'm just like pressing my paintbrush on there a couple times. And you get the idea of the flowers. And that's all I'm gonna do on that one. 
Still not coming back to this one since it burned me, but I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add another layer. I'm gonna take some of this blue and I'm gonna dull it down. Again, you can see my theme on this one. Everything's gonna be more dull and neutral. I'm gonna add in another ridge line. This one's not quite touching that last one. I'm just gonna leave a little bit of space. I'm gonna do the same thing by just bringing some water to touch the bottom of this and let it fade out. I might touch it right in the middle there. There we go. Very nice. So we have all these layers just building closer and closer. Our beach is good. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna put some grasses in here too. It's gonna to be lighter grasses, maybe this color even. A little bit of more brown in it. There, and these are gonna be thinner than the ones over here. More delicate. So you're just trying to very lightly come out with those bend over. I'm gonna have another little clump here coming out of the sand. Just real light lines. And then the last thing I'm gonna do on my beach is I'm gonna add a little bit of gray for a shadow underneath us, that grass. And if you get, a little bit goes a long way in the shadow department. So just a little bit like that in here. And I might even go back in with a little bit of tan in the places that don't touch the grass to create some depth and interest. And then my sea is now done too. So we've got a beach and we've got our prairie scene or our green field. We only have these two in the center. I'm gonna see if this one's done and all I'm doing in the front, I'm gonna create a little ridge line of the darkest color yet. And I'm gonna get some water as I'm going along for that. You can go back and touch it in to add more. And then when that is dry, I'm gonna add some trees in the foreground, just like these, but in a gray tone. Okay, let's come back over here. That wasn't a lot. I'm gonna mix up a dark blue. So I'm gonna add blue and black, and I want it dull. So I'm gonna get some orange, so it's not so bright. of a stormy blue. It is a little damp, but I don't think it's gonna affect what I'm doing. So I'm gonna add in here a nice dark foreground. All the way across. And you can go back and especially touch along the edge. And then I'm gonna make sure I've got plenty of that color. I'm gonna draw a little tree on that ridge. So nice. I don't want too much water in my brush um, or I won't be able to make a delicate enough tree. So I'm just going to right up over all those layers that we worked so hard on. I'm just going to make some branches of my imaginary tree. And at the end of some of these branches as they fork and do interesting things, I'm just going to touch my brush a little bit wherever the branch is in. over here because the trees that I'm painting are on top of this ridge line I can come in again I'm just doing like a gray I'm gonna add a little bit of brown just to dull my black a little bit it's not quite so stark actually 
wouldn't like them to go in front of here. So I'm going to just dry this for the sake of time. With my paper towel. And I'm going to put a tree. Tree here. I'm really not going to do much below that line. Because it's just going to blur. Since it's still a little wet. But up here is plenty dry. And you can see it bleeding out as it touches. You can see my tree got lighter since I didn't go back to get paint. So if I want it to be darker, I need to do that. There we go. I'm just going to blend that in since it bled down. I'm going to make it work for us. Okay, so we've now completed eight different vignettes or mini landscapes. You can now pick one of these and we're going to turn this into a bookmark. So whichever one you'd like that you felt the most successful with, we're going to just do that again on a bookmark and your bookmark's going to be two inches by four inch, uh, two inches by six inches on watercolor paper. So you'll just cut it out with scissors. Measure that out and cut it and then I will show you my bookmark that I completed um, at the end of this video. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you had a lot of fun with this and play around with the colors and try lots of different things and um, subscribe and like if you found this helpful and would like to come back again next time and paint with me. We'll see you next time on Watercolor and Wonder.